tonight, Monday Night Raw airs once again from the Amway Center in Orlando, Florida, inside the WWE Thunderdome. It's night two of the 2020 WWE Draft. Of course, night one was this past Friday night on SmackDown, so night two is going to continue tonight on the USA Network for Monday Night Raw. One of the big picks on Friday's episode on SmackDown was Seth Rollins moving from Monday Night Raw to Friday Night SmackDown. Now, ever since the brand extension came into effect for the second time in WWE's history back in 2016, Seth Rollins, he's always been a Monday Night Raw guy. But for the first time, Seth Rollins is now on SmackDown. The Monday Night Messiah has become the Friday Night Messiah, it would seem. So, tonight... On Monday Night Raw, we have a segment that WWE is promoting as Seth Rollins bidding farewell to Monday Night Raw. Farewell, of course, until maybe he gets drafted back to Raw next year. Who knows? But I was really, really happy to see that Seth Rollins got drafted to SmackDown. If you go and watch the SmackDown preview that I did for Night 1 of the WWE Draft, you'll see that he was one of my predictions. I thought Seth Rollins would get drafted to SmackDown. I feel like it's needed at this point. His character... I wouldn't say his character needs a refresh or anything like that. I think him being this heel and being this righteous heel is still, there's still a lot of mileage in there and there's still a lot they can do with Seth Rollins as as this heel. What I do think needs freshening up is is his is pool of opponents. He needs to have different people to face and he just needs a different a different shade of paint on, on his character. And that's just a case of getting him in a different environment, getting him in a different on a different show, having different voices around him and just a different a slight different presentation on arguably well, not arguably, what is a bigger network on network television. So I was really glad to see Seth Rollins move to SmackDown. I like the possibilities that are there for him. And I was really excited because I felt, like many people probably felt, that once Seth Rollins was drafted to SmackDown on Friday, that this meant that the Seth Rollins and Mysterio feud, Mysterio family feud, was going to be coming to an end finally in WWE. It's been going on since actually about May. It's been going on since the post um, Raw, post Money in the Bank episode of Monday Night Raw back in May. And we've seen everything. We've seen everything since then. We've seen people lose eyes we've seen sons attacked we've seen daughters fall in love with disciples we've seen families attack disciples we've seen father and son team up we've seen everything everything you can possibly see we have seen in this and we have also seen Seth Rollins versus Rey Mysterio a hundred times we've seen Seth Rollins versus Dominic Mysterio a million times at this point we've seen Seth Rollins and Murphy versus Dominic Mysterio and Rey Mysterio there's nothing left to do there is nothing left to do and I'm all for long-form storytelling. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for... I've said it with the likes of the Sasha Banks feud, and I've said it for lots of other feuds recently, that I'm all for WWE taking their time and stretching storylines out. I don't have a problem with that. What I do have a problem is when WWE obviously is trying to stretch something out and there's nothing left. There's no, there's no story left there to tell. So I was very happy that Seth Rollins was drafted to SmackDown because I thought, great, we can have Seth Rollins versus... A load of other people. I know there's apparently some heat between him and Matt Riddle and he doesn't want to face Matt Riddle. We'll wait and see on that. But I thought maybe we'd get Seth Rollins versus Jeff Hardy or Seth Rollins, I don't know, versus this new Roman Reigns. How great could that be? Or Seth Rollins versus Daniel Bryan. And, you know, these things opened up. These things opened up that we haven't seen before or haven't seen for a while. They're fresh matches. They're different and it could be a lot of fun. And I was really excited to see that. And then wouldn't you know it... <laughs> One of the later picks in the draft is Ray and Dominic Mysterio coming to Friday Night SmackDown as well. So that to me says that this this Ray Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio feud with Seth Rollins is set to continue and it doesn't have an end date in sight. For whatever reason, the powers that be in WWE have decided that this storyline is so good that it needs to be seen by more people. Because, of course, Money Night Raw is not the most viewed show in WWE now. Of course, SmackDown is on Fox, which is network television. It gets more viewers than Monday Night Raw and ever has been since uh, SmackDown debuted on Fox back in October last year. So 12 months ago, for 12 straight months, I I think, um, except on maybe one or two occasions, SmackDown has always, always outdrawn Monday Night Raw in terms of total viewership, and I think even the demo too. So... WWE and Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard and whoever have seen this recent development in the Seth Rollins versus Rey Mysterio storyline that now involves Dominic Mysterio, that now involves Aaliyah Mysterio and her fledgling romance with Murphy. They have seen this 
and send these segments. They've seen the segments where Seth Rollins has speculated that Aaliyah might not actually be the daughter of Rey Mysterio and had DNA tests and now he's released dms and released text messages and maybe Aaliyah is in love with uh, murphy who is so many years her senior wwe has seen this and said you know what this is this is too good this is too good for monday night raw this is too good for 1.6 to 1.8 million viewers what we really need we need to have this on network tv we need to have this on smackdown we need to have more viewers watching it because this is such good you know the rest and I was just so disappointed. I was so disappointed because, look, again, I'm really happy that Seth Rollins is on SmackDown because it opens up a different pool of opponents. I do think he needs to be in a slightly different environment. He's been on Raw for so long. He's been on Raw for, what, four years now, close to five years. It's the right time for him to move. It's the perfect example of how a brand split can work. You're exclusive to one brand for four or five years, and once you need freshening up, you can go to a different environment. That's why... The brand split should work, even though it's not like Monday Night, Raw, Monday Night Raw and SmackDown don't feel like different shows or look like different shows anyway. But I thought this was fantastic. And even if Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio alone, they were drafted to SmackDown, I'd be fine with that. Because again, different opponents opens up a different pool of people that Rey Mysterio can face, opens up a, a different pool of people that Dominic Mysterio can cut his teeth and face and get better and learn in the ring. I love that. But you know for a fact, even the Mysterios mentioned it in their promo, they spoke about facing Seth Rollins on SmackDown, this storyline isn't over. So Seth Rollins saying farewell to Monday Night Raw tonight doesn't really feel like a farewell at all because we're going to see the exact same thing on SmackDown. And to me, that's really, really disappointing. Now, of course, eventually this feud will end, even though it doesn't feel like it will end. It will end eventually. I don't know when, I don't know how, but it looks set to continue on Friday nights, which is disappointing because this this Seth Rollins versus Mysterio storyline, I wouldn't say it's been horrific. I wouldn't say it's been really, really bad. It's one of those storylines that, and this has happened quite a few times over WWE history, where obviously, I mean, I don't, and I'm just basing this on my opinion, it looks to me like Vince McMahon really, really likes this. And when he really, really likes this and he gets into the soap opera element storylines and he's done this over the course of WWE history, once he gets into it, he just, he will never let it go. He will never let it go. And he feels like there's more to tell and there's more to tell and there's more to tell. And that's what it just feels like in this, that he's never going to let it go. It's like Seth Rollins, unfortunately, this Monday Night Messiah character, he's been riddled with it. He actually has been riddled with it. Remember his first feud, once he turned heel on Monday Night Raw last year, was against Kevin Owens. That lasted all the way till WrestleMania. He turned heel in November, and it lasted until April. Six months that lasted. It lasted six full months, and everyone, by the end of it, was saying, I am so done with this. And that's not to say their WrestleMania match wasn't good, because it was good. And that's not to say that their promos heading into WrestleMania weren't good, because they were good. They were very good. But by the time it came around, it was like, man, we've been doing this for six months. And it's kind of the same. It's kind of the same with the Mysterios is that we're heading, what, we're in October now and we're heading closer to November. It makes you wonder, are WWE going to pull this out until the end of the year? Because I kind of feel like they might. I kind of feel like they might because Hell in a Cell is scheduled for later this month. I don't think they're going to have a Hell in a Cell match or anything like that. So it looks like this storyline is set to continue for the foreseeable future. And again, it's just very, very disappointing. It's very, very disappointing because I want to see both. Uh, I want to see both groups of people move on. And I haven't mentioned also that in addition to Seth Rollins being drafted to SmackDown and Dominic Mysterio and Rey Mysterio being drafted to SmackDown, Murphy was also revealed to be drafted to SmackDown too. So I don't know who those executives at Fox in storyline who are drafting these people because why on earth? Would they see that stuff on Monday Night Raw and go, we need more of that on Fox? And again, it makes me laugh because I think back to about 18 months ago when it was announced, or maybe a little bit longer than that, that Fox had purchased the rights to SmackDown and they paid WWE a $1 billion contract. And for months before we before we saw SmackDown's debut and we heard these reports of SmackDown coming to, to Fox for months and months and months, all we heard was sports oriented programming. That's what they wanted. A sports oriented programming, sports oriented presentation. I must have read and heard that phrase a million times. I must have seen it and heard it a million times. Sports oriented programming and sports oriented presentation. 
that Fox wanted Ronda Rousey and Fox wanted Daniel Cormier and Fox wanted Brock Lesnar and Fox wanted this to tie into their NFL coverage and they wanted SmackDown to be in addition to their sports that they had on the network. So they wanted it to have a sports feel. And instead, what do we get? We get Roman Reigns versus King Corbin for the first six months of that show. That was all about people dressing up in dog costumes and being thrown dog food on them. We've got karaoke showdowns. We've got public urination tests in the in the ring. And now we've got the biggest soap opera storyline on Monday Night Raw. And that's coming over to SmackDown now. I just find it baffling. I just find it absolutely baffling. It just, it's very, very confusing to me. And I think it's a bit of a shame because there has been such a disparity between Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown ever since really Roman Reigns returned. So ever since August, that Friday Night SmackDown has just been a real pleasure to watch. It's been a fantastic program to watch. And in opposition to that, Monday Night Raw has been a really, really tough watch on several occasions. It is so hard to watch. And yes, the... The run length in that does play a factor. Raw being three hours does make it incredibly difficult to watch in opposition to SmackDown's two hours. But also, I think just the Raw's quality, the, the stories being told on Raw, they lack a lot of logic. They don't make sense. They're difficult to watch. The acting involved isn't great. And again, it just there is no real story or the story is poorly told. Whereas in opposition to that, SmackDown has been very, very good. And you've had the likes of Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. What a fantastic storyline that's been. You've got The Fiend and Alexa Bliss. That partnership has been absolutely compelling. You had the Sami Zayn, Jeff Hardy and AJ Styles. That storyline and that ladder match was brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. And SmackDown, quite frankly, was blowing Raw out of the water. It really was. So... And I don't want to say that Seth Rollins and the Mysterios were a real low part of Raw because they're all fantastic talents. But the storyline is something that to me was just a massive turnoff and was one of those stories on Raw that I just really didn't care for. So to see that coming on to SmackDown and sort of go, man, I was enjoying SmackDown and now it feels like it's going to be potentially ruined is a disappointment. It is a disappointment. But hopefully their feud on SmackDown will be brief because Lord knows we have seen so much of it on Monday Night Raw this year that it just it feels like it's over it, well it needs to be over it needs to be over it's just too long it's way too long so tonight Seth Rollins will come out say goodbye to to Monday Night Raw I'm sure we'll also see appearances from Murphy I'm sure we'll see appearances from the Mysterio family too considering that Seth Rollins is saying goodbye I would assume that Murphy and the Mysterio say goodbye too so I'm sure we'll see the next chapter or next development of of the Murphy and Aaliyah storyline and the Seth Rollins and Mysterio storyline that refuses to end. So I'm sure we'll see something like that. In terms of the payoff for that, you know, this is what this is difficult about this storyline is I don't know. I don't know what the payoff for all of that is. I'm assuming, I'm assuming that the payoff for all of this is that we're going to have Murphy versus Seth Rollins at some point, because it feels like that's where it's going, that Seth Rollins has or, or or Murphy will turn on Seth Rollins due to his affection for Aaliyah. I don't know. I just don't know. And it almost feels like now with the Murphy and Aaliyah section of this taking center stage that Dominic Mysterio and Rey Mysterio are kind of on the back burner and so is Seth Rollins. Again, it's very confusing. It's it's very confusing. I think, as I said, the payoff is probably Murphy versus Seth Rollins unless that this is all a ruse to get at the Mysterio family and then they betray, Murphy betrays Aaliyah, or maybe Aaliyah goes with Murphy and Seth Rollins. Who knows? Who knows? There are so many questions here, and I'm sure that there being so many questions is the reason that WWE is continuing with this. They think there's more story to tell, even though I don't think there is. But we'll have to wait and see, and we'll have to wait and see who else makes an appearance tonight on Raw. But of course, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on Seth Rollins being drafted to SmackDown along with Dominic and Rey Mysterio? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll be sure to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys and talking about Monday Night Raw here on the channel. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button as well. It really does help us out here on YouTube, go up the rankings and getting people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestle News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now or if you wait a few seconds there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch thank you very much for watching listening streaming or however you come across this video today and i'll speak to you again very very soon 
Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.